In this problem, we're asked to determine the radius of gyration of the following structure, about point O. So we have two disks, A and B, of the same dimensions, and then we have three plates, uh, C, D, and E, uh, of different dimensions. Everything is of constant thickness into the page, um, and again, disks A and B are of the same dimensions and all of the other geometrical properties are given. Now we're given the mass moment of inertia and we're asked to find the radius of gyration. So since we are given the moment of inertia we can actually write out the formula for the radius of gyration which is k radius of gyration is equal to the square root of the mass moment of inertia divided by the mass. Now um, we have I, and we're asked to find K, so all we need to determine is the mass. Now, um, we're, again, we're not given a density and we're not given a mass, so we're going to have to solve for that. Now, we can solve for the mass based on the mass moment of inertia, because mass moment of inertia depends, again, on the density or the mass of the material and then geometrical properties, which we're given. So, um, we're going to have to find... a expressions for the mass moment of inertia uh, from the components of all of these uh, parts of the system and then combine them, combine this equation, equate it to this uh, mass moment of inertia and solve for the mass of the structure. Now since there's many components we can each uh, of these components will have a different mass because it has a different geometry so we can't actually directly solve for mass in that equation we actually have to solve for the density and once we solve for the density, then we can go back and solve for mass. Uh, so again, um, we have to solve for the density of the material, which is constant throughout the structure. So we're actually, since we're taking it at about point O here, uh, we're going to start with a structure that is centered at O, which is the first plate, and then we're going to um, calculate the mass moment of inertia I for each of these five um, distinct shapes. Uh, remember the mass moment of inertia uh, about a point um, is specific to the shape. If the center of mass is away from that point, we also have to use parallel axis. Um, so for example, in this case, this midpoint, we need to shift with parallel axis. Let's start at disk A. At disk A, um, we first need to calculate the mass and then we can plug that into the equation for the mass moment of inertia. So the mass of disk A is going to be equal to the density of the material times the volume of disk A. And the volume of disk A is going to be equal to um, the thickness times the area. And the area is just the area of a circle, so pi r squared. So we have uh, the density times pi r squared times thickness t. And so this is going to, or you can actually plug in everything except for the density, which is the variable we're solving for. We have rho uh, pi times 0 0.3 meters to the power of 2. Again, this is the radius. And then times 0 0.005 meters, and that's the thickness. Okay, and then we can actually solve, we can plug that into the formula for IZZ, which is again uh, the mass moment of inertia. Uh, and that equation is one half mR squared for a disk. And um, we can plug in m, so we get uh, one half rho pi. 0 0.3 squared 0 0.005 and this is going to be kilogram kilogram meter squared all right so this is for disk a now we're going to do the same process for our plate c sorry but plate C, the center of mass is located away from point O, about which we are measuring um, the um, 
about which we're given the um, mass moment of inertia. So we need to use parallel axis. So we're going to calculate again the rotation, the mass moment of inertia about the, the center of mass, and then we're going to shift it to point O based on that distance with m l squared, l being the distance between this point and between the center of mass and point O. So um, let's do that. So for our mass is going to be equal to rho times the volume of C. Now volume of C is base times height times depth because it's a plate. Um, and so we're just going to plug those in. 1.1 uh, meters times uh, 0.15 meters times 0.005 meters. And that's going to get, and if we solve for everything, that 0 0.0008 to five row um, kilograms, these are the units. Then we again solve for IZZ, which is equal to for a thin plate, or for a plate, one twelfth m a squared plus b squared, where um, this is the length and this is the width. Um, so we can plug those in and and then again we have to use parallel axis. Um, so if we plug those in we get 1 over 12 um, m which is what we had before times 0 0.000825 um, rho kilogram, kilograms and now we add the length and the width added squared. So we have 1.1 meters squared plus 0 0.15 meters squared. Okay, uh, and now we have to use parallel axis to get I um, about 0.0 of C. And this is going to be equal to IZZ plus ML squared. And again, this L is the distance between this point O and the center of mass of point of uh, C. Um, so that's, we can just essentially plug in all the values and we get the following. Then we add the mass 0 0.000825 rho kilograms um, times the length, which is 0 0.55 uh, meters squared. And if we, and then we're gonna, we can simplify this, but uh, I'll, I'll simplify it later. Um, so essentially, this is a function of just um, rho here and over here. All right, now we can move on to the next plate, which is plate D. And it's a bit more intricate to find the distance between O and this uh, center point here. Um, so we'll use some trigonometry, but again, everything else is the same as plate C. So plate D is going to have... Um, a mass equal to rho times the volume, which is equal to rho times 0 0.3 meters times 0 0.15 meters times 0 0.005 meters. Again, this is base times width times height. And this is going to be equal to 0 0.000 two to five rho kilograms. Okay, and now we can solve for IZZ. 
IZZ is going to be equal to uh, 1 over 12 m a squared plus b squared. Again, uh, length and width of the plate. And that's going to be equal to 1 over 12 times 0 0.000225 rho kilograms times a squared, which in this case is 0 0.3 meters all squared plus 0 0.15 meters all squared. Okay, so that's IZZ. And now we have to find um, I of O per D. So again, we're going to use parallel axis. So this is going to be equal to IZZ plus ML squared. This L squared is the distance between uh, this point and the midpoint because uh, the center of mass is distributed at the middle of that plate. Um, so we're going to use some trigonometry to um, solve for that distance. So we have that um, 0 0.55 distance to the left, so that's the radius of, of bar C, and then halfway down that um, um, plate D is going to be 0 0.15 meters, these are both meters, um, and this is going to be a right angle because we're given that. So we can use Pythagoras to find this distance here, which is going to be L. Um, so L is going to be equal to the square root of 130 over uh, 20. So now we can plug L in to this equation over here, and we have IZZ, and we have our mass over here, so we can essentially solve for IOD uh, with respect to rho. So this is the following equation that we get. plus 0 0.00025 rho kilograms um, times 13 over 40 meters squared. And again, every, this whole equation here is in terms of rho. So we've done plate D, now let's move on to um, disk B. So again, disk B uses the same formula as disk A, but now we're offset from this point O, so we, we're offset from point O, so we have to add this distance. Um, so let me draw in the distances so it's, it's clear. Um, so this is going to be L for plate D, and this over here is going to be L for B. Okay, and the triangle I drew before was this triangle over here. This triangle over here, so in red over here, like that. Um, so now we're going to do, the angles are a bit different, so essentially we do Pythagoras again, um, but this time we're going to go all the way to the end of that, um, of D. Um, so. Let's solve for the mass first, just like we did before. And the mass is going to be identical to the mass of disk A because they have the same dimensions. So the mass is going to be equal to um, rho pi times 0 0.3 meters squared times 0 0.005 meters. Now we can find I of ZZ. And this is equal to the same as the one before, because it's the same dimensions. So I'm just going to directly 
we put what we had before? Um, and this is in kilograms meters squared. And now we can find I of about O from disk B. And that is going to be equal to I of ZZ plus ML squared. And now it's a bit more challenging to find L because uh, L will be, again, this here, LB. So we're just going to travel further down the full distance of LD. So redrawing that triangle, uh, we get the following. So again, we have this right angle over here. Um, we have 0 0.55 meters, and here we have 0 0.3 meters instead of the half, which is 0 0.15 meters. Again, um, just to be clear, we're assuming that um, like this bar attaches at the midpoint here and at the midpoint of B. Um, and again, LE is from the center of B um, to the end of E. Okay, so that's where the distances are from. And so now we can find that L, that distance is with just through Pythagoras, um, is going to be equal to 0 0.626 meters. And we can plug it into our equation and solve for IOB with respect to um, rho. So again, this is going to be 1 half rho pi times 0 0.3 meters to the 4, 0 0.005 meters uh, plus on the second component, which is rho times pi times 0 0.3 meters, where everything squared, times 0 0.005 meters times 0 0.626 that's meters squared. Again, because it's ml squared, so I just took that length squared. And then uh, we essentially we solve for IOB. Now let's move on to plate E. So plate E, again, it's a bit more complex geometry because now the distance, or L for a parallel axis, Start from here, and we end at the midpoint of E here. It's going to be L E, um, and um, essentially we use the same concept. There's just a bit more trigonometry um, involved in this problem. So, like always, let's solve for the mass first. So the mass is going to be equal to the density times the volume of E, which is going to be equal to rho times 0 0.21 meters times 0. 0 0.15 meters times 0 0.005 meters and um, this is going to be equal to 0 0.001575 rho kilograms and so I just essentially um, multiplied all these together and now I can um, find IZZ so IZZ is going to be equal, so it's the one for a plate, 1 12th of um, M and then A squared plus B squared, where A and B are the length and the width. So we have 0 0.0001575 rho times 0 0.21 meters squared plus 0 0.15 meters squared. And now again, to solve for um, I about 0.0 from E, we have 
I have ZZ plus ML squared. Um, so we have I as a Z, we just need to find L. So L is a bit more intricate. Um, so we're, I'm just going to draw out all the arms. So we know that this angle here is going to be 30 degrees. This angle here is 105 degrees. And we know that this is a right angle. This is 0 0.55 meters. And this is uh, 0 0.3 meters and this last one is 0 0.105 meters 105 because we're only getting to the halfway point right um, this is not the full length of E we're only getting to the halfway point or the center of mass uh, so uh, we can uh, we're just going to do it in the x and y coordinates so we're, we're going to find so we're going to assume this is 0 um, and we're going to find the x and y coordinates of this point um, and then sum the squares to get that um, distance over there with Pythagoras. Um, so it's just going to involve some trigonometry. So the x component is going to be equal to 0 0.55 uh, times cos of 30 degrees uh, plus 0 0.3 times uh, cos of 60 degrees. And this is if you do Pythagoras. This is essentially the component um, of uh, this thing here, of, from this arm here, um, the x component. Um, and then we have plus 0 0.105 uh, cos of 15 degrees. Again, if you do Pythagoras, you see that this angle here is 15 degrees. And so that's our x component, and it's going to be equal to 0 0.72 seven seven meters and we can solve for the y component which is just everything in terms of sine not cosine so 0 0.55 sine of 30 degrees plus 0 0.3 sine of 60 degrees plus 0 0.105 sine of 15 degrees which is equal to uh, 0 0.5619 meters then we take the sum of the squares to find um, L squared. Um, so L squared is equal to uh, 0 0.8454. And this is going to be in units of meters squared because, um, again, it's L squared, not L. I just uh, squared these two and because they're x and y components and took the sum of them. So now I have L squared, I can directly plug it into here and solve for IOE in terms of uh, rho, with this, which is the density. So we have 1 over 12, 0 0.0001575 rho times 0 0.21 meters squared plus 0 0.15 meters squared. And then we add this new component from parallel axis, which is uh, 0 0.0001575 rho um, times L squared, which is 0 0.8454 meters squared. And uh, we have IOE. So now we have all of the components for I, which is IOE, IOB, IOD, IOC, and IOA, which is just IZZ because it's uh, centered. So we can add them all up and equate them to the value of 15.2 uh, kilograms meter square that we have. So I total is equal to IA plus IOB plus IOC plus IOD plus IOE. And this, um, if we add it up, um, we're going to get the following.
so that is uh, I total. Now we also know that I total is equal to 15.2. So we can solve for a row. Row is going to be equal to uh, 1.2401 times 10 to the negative times 10 to the 4 um, kilograms per meter cubed. So this is the density. Now we have the density. Uh, so we can uh, find the mass. So remember the relation between uh, mass, volume, and density is that the mass is equal to the volume times the density. And um, we have we now have the density, so we can actually solve for the total mass, um, which is going to be equal to, and we also all already have the volume. The volume is just um, adding up all of the uh, of these volumes that we have, the E, um, then we have this is the volume, um, or we can just sum up all of these masses and add rho in it, same thing. Um, but essentially, and let me write this clearly so it doesn't look like V E, V rho, um, and we get a mass of 50.04 kilograms, okay? I skip the plugging in because it takes a, a lot of space, but if you just plug it in, you get that value. Um, and once you have this mass, then we can finally solve for that radius of gyration. So k is equal to the square root of i total divided by the mass, which is going to be equal to if we plug in square root of um, 15.2 kilogram meter squared divided by zero uh, fifty point zero four kilograms is going to be equal to um, zero point five five meters and this is going to be equal to a radius of gyration